Super Saiyan transformation would officially be revealed in Manga Chapter 317, where we would finally see the true form in its glorious golden hair and green-eyed appearance come to life. Finally, our hero, Goku, could stand a chance against the Galactic Emperor, Lord Frieza, and would give him the beating of a lifetime. We later found out that the state that Goku and soon after, future Trunks, Vegeta, and all the other Saiyans would attain would be considered Super Saiyan Grade 1. But today we're not going to be discussing the history or lore of this form. Instead, we'll be talking about how it's attained and maintained by the body from a science perspective. The super exciting guide states that the official multiplier of Super Saiyan is 50 times. So we know that the Saiyan's base strength and speed is boosted by this number. But how is the body able to achieve such a massive increase and maintain it for an extended period of time? What even are the drawbacks of Grade 1? The Saiyans bear a remarkably similar resemblance to a human's appearance. They demand the same air that we breathe, eat the same food, drink water to stay hydrated, and require sleep just as we do. So how is it that their bodies can provide this massive power-up of 50 times of what they are normally able to do? In a recent interview, Toriyama would explain what Saiyans require in order to become Super Saiyans, and the main factor lies within the number of SLs that each Saiyan has. Of course, there are other factors to this transformation as well. The other requirements are a high battle power, an anger or rage trigger, and a gentle or calm spirit which can be brought on from living a peaceful life on planet Earth. But these aren't nearly as important as the first point. We also learned that the rage trigger would stimulate an explosive increase in the number of S cells, activating them and allowing the transformation and power increase to occur. We also know that each of the Saiyans could not have transformed without either of these factors contributing to their transformations as well. Goku was able to do it after witnessing his best friend Krillin blow up to pieces right in front of him by Frieza. Meanwhile, future Trunks had greater difficulty unlocking the form. Even though he was being trained by a Super Saiyan future Gohan, it was only after finding his lifeless body and Gohan's last battle with the androids was Trunks pushed far enough. Driven by the anger and rage of not having enough power and not being able to help his master Gohan, he was able to finally transform. Meanwhile, Vegeta's transformation is quite different from the others, as his happened during filler episodes and was never spoken of in the manga. And it's up to you as a fan to decide if you want to consider his transformation his actual one from the filler. Gohan would also struggle transforming while training with his father in the Room of Spirit and Time similar to how Future Trunks initially struggled to attain the form. Yet unlike his brother Goten and present Trunks, they wouldn't have the same issues transforming into Super Saiyans as they made it look like child's play, doing it at ages 7 and 8. Goten and Trunks were able to do so because the genes they inherited from their Saiyan fathers contained more SLs opposed to how many Gohan would have received from Goku especially since it would have been before he became a Super Saiyan. So it's all tied into these S cells, which has to mean that something is causing or allowing them to produce a 50 times increase in energy in order for the Saiyans to perform this feat to begin with. Now as a scientist and future doctor, I know that a massive boost increase of this scale isn't a feat the body should normally be capable of. It must mean that there is some sort of stimuli that triggers this. We later learn that when Whis brings up the Super Saiyan form to Beerus, he calls it a mutation that the Saiyans undergo. Yet this transformation change cannot be considered a mutation, because that will contradict what Toriyama says in his interview with S cells being triggered by anger and not the cells undergoing some sort of mutation instead. Let's look at another species to understand this phenomenon, the chameleon. It has the ability to change colors based on the environment that it's in. It doesn't undergo spontaneous mutations each time it needs to change color and camouflage itself with its surroundings. Instead, the genes that are encoded in the chameleon cells can change based on the environment or stressors and stimulate 
certain specific actions to happen. It uses this genetic encoding as a defense mechanism. All the meanwhile, it's not undergoing mutations to exhibit these changes. Just that those specific cells are being stimulated and activated when it needs to camouflage itself. Similarly, in a Saiyan, when Goku and Vegeta sensed that their base form wouldn't be strong enough to battle against the androids, they powered up into their Super Saiyan state to fight them. While we gear back towards Saiyan biology, it isn't their normal occurring cells that allow them to withstand the stress of becoming a Super Saiyan. Rather, the point that we might be confusing here is that each Saiyan has a set number of S cells in their body, and it's the stimulation and activation of these cells that allow them to transform and maintain the Super Saiyan state. So it comes down to a Saiyan's genetic encoding, similar to the chameleon and not a mutation like I mentioned we saying earlier. The change is able to occur because of a result of the environment and the, their bodies that are already programmed to handle the required boost. Without the necessary rage trigger, the S cells don't have their necessary stimuli and thus none of the Saiyans would be able to perform this transformation. This phenomena of activation is due to a cascade effect stemming from anger and rage, and equally from also having a high battle power. With all of that said, the transformation results are not the same as we know since there are several grades to the Super Saiyan state, while we've only just discussed Super Saiyan Grade 1. We would later learn that Grade 1 came with a big drawback because it had a huge stamina problem. So let me know if this clears up exactly how Saiyans are able to transform from a scientific aspect. Comment below any questions you still have on the topic, and especially if I've missed any information as well. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this, as I'll be following up this video with the other three grades of Super Saiyan shortly. Thank you all again, and until next time, see ya.